What's up? What's good? It's your boy and your favorite host, Tommy Springfield, a.k.a. the king of all things related to talk TV, radio, internet, cell phone, fax machines, beepers, text messages, emails, shit. We even talk sideways language over here. You could be from the hood. You could be from the suburbs. You could be sitting in a barbershop. You can be in a nail salon getting your nails done. You can speak English. You can speak Spanish. You can speak Chinese. Or you can speak Japanese. Whatever form of communication you using. We got you covered. It's only a few types of talk we don't do. We ain't pillow talking. We ain't hating on folks. And we definitely not talking to law enforcement. If you new here, click that like. Click that share. Click that subscribe. Hit the bell. Click all. So you can get notifications on every time I do one of these videos. And if you don't know, we 420 friendly over here. So if you don't like dude smoking, this ain't the channel for you. We got coffee. We got tea with fruit in it and too much sugar on the bottom. That's how we do it over here. But before we get into today's video, I just got one question. Can I talk to you? Yeah! Folks, 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 folks. I don't think you heard me. I said, can I talk to you? God damn it. Yeah! Today's video, <clears throat> we back. I do a few videos on this dude. One, we on Vlad TV channel, the world's YouTube number one prosecutor. Give it up for the number one prosecutor on YouTube, Vlad TV. And we got federal informant number one. No, he's like number two or three because... <laughs> Gene Squill was ahead of him and Jaguar Wright, but they are all part of the uh, prosecution Vlad TV's team to convict Diddy. So in this video, we got Roger Bonds talking about he be seeing the gay freak off dudes. Well, one of the things that was mentioned in the lawsuit was the freak offs. Yes. So, in the lawsuit, Cassie said, while in New York, Diddy told her that he wanted to engage in a fantasy of his called voyeurism. He said it would turn him on if he saw Cassie with another dick. So, he allegedly forced her to engage in sex acts with male sex workers while he would masturbate and film it. Before we move on, I'm going to read the Cassie lawsuit later, but when people say someone forced me to do something, I don't take that lightly because to force someone to do something is like a hard thing to do. I'm going to force you to go get another man and bring him into the relationship. I'm going to force you to do that. I think it was more or less, hey, baby, I'm into this. <clears throat> That's what it turned me on. And she wanted to be with Diddy. And she wanted to be in the limelight. And she did it. So all that, oh, uh, he forced, nah. That was the wording to get that check. But nah. First time, uh, Diddy hired a man. Brought him to his home in Los Angeles. Everyone was wearing masquerade masks. <laughs> I could believe. <laughs> and everyone took drugs. He would instruct her to perform sex acts with the man while he watched. He would masturbate and, you know, have the man do specific acts. This would last for multiple days. He would call them freak offs or FOs. And he would basically tell her that he wanted this thing all the time. And eventually he would have her actually go to websites to hire these male sex workers herself. He basically said that this was our thing and our secret. These freak offs would happen at all types of hotels all around the country. Uh, at one point in 2013, um, they were at the Intercontinental in New York where there was like tens of thousands of dollars of damages in the hotel after one of these. She said the chief of staff, Tony Fletcher, paid the invoice. Were you around Tony Fletcher? Yes, I was. Okay. 
Tony Fletcher was uh, the accountant. She's also the one that came to me where then he had a thing where it didn't matter if you worked 20 hours a day, if you worked 24 hours, if he was in the studio 36 hours, he didn't want to pay you for the hours that you worked. Hmm. So he had Tony Fletcher come to me and say, listen, Barnes got all the hours that he worked in. And she said, Barnes, can you please? So, <clears throat> D.L. Hughley made a post. I say it every time I talk about this dude. If you was around when all these crimes are going on, and now today you're sitting on these platforms telling your story, you are no longer a witness. You are an accomplice. You get that? This man was an accomplice to all these things. Why do I bring that up? Because he said, oh, people ask me, why did I stay? He stayed because he wanted the money. He stayed because he wanted to be around Diddy. He stayed because he liked to be in on the yachts and the boats and, and driving the big cars and being sheltered around. And you think he wasn't getting no pussy? You think he wasn't sleeping with some of these ladies that Diddy brought around? He a goddamn man. You a fool if you think he wasn't. But my point is, this was a reason for him to quit. This was a reason for him to leave Diddy alone. At this point, allegedly, you done seen Diddy beating Kim. You done seen Diddy, Diddy beating Cassie. And you saying Diddy don't want pay. So why you didn't quit? I'll wait And y'all can get in the comment section And try to defend this man This man full of shit He's just put 12 hours a day On there So she was his go to With whatever Type of things That had to do with money Or office work So his accountant Like Vlad said You stupid ass ninja Got it So he would have Cassie Go to the <laughs> website To find escorts <laughs> And he instructed her to search for large black penises. Mm. She claimed that he would. So in the lawsuit, did he like that the large big thingy thingies? Fly these male sex workers to all different types of cities. The assistants would set up these free coughs in the hotel suites with baby oil and Astro Glide. Yeah. There'd be lots of drugs. She was given ecstasy, cocaine, GHB. Ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol. Listen, <clears throat> Prosecutor Vlad, you know, he's trying to run the case. He runs the case for the Federal Bureau, the FBI. He runs cases on their social media. He's their social media guy. He prosecutes all the black folks in the public side. And, and on social media that's job Vlad's job that's where he get all his money from but you, you, you see how Vlad asks these questions they don't even be questions they be statements and he just want these dudes to respond and they lame ass do and uh, afterwards like you described after these free coughs they would go get IV fluids right to kind of recover from it um yeah it, it gets pretty graphic uh at one of those situations he would say like grab that big black dick how does it feel uh you know he'd use a laptop and a phone to record everything um and then sometimes he would use her phone and she would delete it but then he would say oh i could still get it back and at one point i guess he showed her a video that she thought uh she had deleted and she would kind of freak out and everything else like that and there was you know when things didn't work out, there was more violence and everything else like that. Now, you yourself, you never were involved in these freak offs on, on any level. No, nah, I never was involved in the You see, you see that that looking off to the side and all of that, he's not looking directly at the person that's interviewing, even though I know Vlad don't actually be in the room with you. Vlad just rent studios all over the place, New York, L.A., Miami, and then the team shows up, they set up, and then they put a, a, a like a tablet in front of you, and Vlad talks to you through this tablet, but um, he's not even looking at Vlad, he's lying, listen, 
every male that worked for Diddy participated in the freak off. Do not let them lie to you. These are square ass men, right? Do you, look at him. Not saying he an ugly man. Not saying he the greatest looking man. He actually looks like Cuba Gooding Jr. Right? You think he not fucking these bad top model bitches Diddy is fucking? You think if Diddy is fucking one of the top models in the world and he say, Hey, Bond, you can get some more. Hey, Bond, her girl was here. You think he ain't getting them? Stop it, man. Stop believing these rats that got personal issues with Diddy and now they want to talk. He's an accomplice. He, he has a video where he said he guarded Cassie to make sure she didn't go nowhere after Diddy, no, Kim, after Diddy allegedly broke her nose. You are accomplished, bro. Stop it. But of course he participated in these freak-off plats. And you, you, you a good prosecutor because why you ain't hammer that in on them? But you treat your witnesses good. I get it, Vlad. Freak-offs in every le any level, but... It's just what she, he had, like I explained to you earlier, he had a medicine bag where all the medicines would be in and all the drugs would be in. But he also had a camera bag. So this camera bag was, if you remember back in the days, people still have them now, the little camera that you just put right there and you can hold and they come with the little cassette tapes. So he had an assistant and the assistant job was to keep this camera. I don't care, no matter where you go, don't put this camera bag down. And I specifically remember one time his assistant named Tommy had lost one of the cassettes. And Puff was getting frantic, like, yo, where is this cassette at? And everything that she said made sense because this was their personal videographer camera that they would use whenever they went to the hotels and everything. And it was the assistant job to keep it, to make sure you watched it, make sure you don't put this bag down nowhere. So I definitely agree, as well as there's times when they went to the hotel. And, you know, me being the nosy person that I am, you know, like, yo, I, yo, you got the weekend off. Yo, you got the day off. I'd be like, all right. So you know how you get to the hotel. I'm going to eat some fruit, you know. He's like, yo, what you still here for? You got to leave. So I'm like, yo, why are you rushing me, yo? <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to be nosy now. So when I get by the elevator, I done took so much time to come down that when I'm coming down the elevator, I might see a Rico Suave getting on the elevator. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like... Listen, this is why he full of shit. And if you got any brains or any intelligence, you know he's lying. But Vlad just a bozo and a clown that's looking to bash any black dude. This how you know he lying. So, he's saying he done witness dudes going to Diddy crib because it's strange that Diddy gives him the weekend off. Oh, man, your boss gives you the weekend off. It means he's gay. Stop it. Now he says, oh, I don't went to the elevator. Now he's saying he, he at the penthouse. Now he's all the way down on the first floor. And he sees just a random Rike Suave getting on the elevator. And he know this guy's going to Puff Crib. Stop. Stop it, bro. You seen the Rike Suave and you said, damn, that look like the nigga we fucked last week. Puff cheating on me Puff cheating on me And so you followed the weak Rike Suave up to the room Cause your ass was jealous Let, Let's keep it a dollar bro you, You're not gonna leave a penthouse At the top of a hotel Go all the way down to the first floor And just push a random And pick a random dude And say he go in the Puff room and why is it was only one person getting on the elevator? So you mean you in this fancy hotel and two or three people didn't get on the elevator? You just picked this random dude. Come on. Stop it, bro. You a liar, bro. You lying. I, I, he don't know me, so I'm going to stay on the elevator. <laughs> and I stay on the elevator and the elevator stop on puff floor. Huh. 
And I'll be like, mm, okay. And then I wouldn't let the door close because this person is oblivious to who I am. So he would just walk straight to Puff Door and I'll just be watching and I'll see him knock on the door and then I'll see him go in. In my mind, at this particular time, I'm so happy I got the day off. I'm not thinking about what's... I said, well, they some freaks. That's so what is it? You so happy you got your day off. You rushing out the hotel... Or you so happy that it's your day off that you followed a random guy that you assume was going to the penthouse. Bro, if anybody believe this shit, you just lame, bro. You just lame. So I don't know about him saying, you know, this, that, and the other, but I know for sure that those guys, because then he would hit me if they had a party that night and he would be like, Barnes, you remember... Such and such, see what? And it was one guy specifically, he would say it was a guy named Michael from Miami. And I knew this guy, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't know what role he played in nothing. But Puff would always ask me, yo, can you make sure he get in the party? He ain't got to be in the section, but just make sure he get in the party. Mm -hmm. Then it was times that we went away and I would always have the adjoining room to his room. See? But it was bingo, bingo. Bingo would be I N G O B I N G O and Bingo was his name. Oh, he tell us he always had the room next door to Puffy. He always snuck in the Puffy room. If you let these dudes talk, they'll tell you. Listen, times where the assistant would be like, "Yo, your room is up the hall." I'd be like, "Yo, my room," and then I might see the same guy got the adjoining room. So I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, so he just told you he would be upset when he didn't have the adjoining room. See, this is one of those things uh, like Cassie, did he moved on? Did he ain't, you ain't blowing Diddy back out? Did he ain't blowing your back out? So you want Vlad running your mouth like a girl now? File a lawsuit. Get a check, bro. Go ahead. Do what the bitches do because you, you doing bitch shit now. I'm going and then on my times that we went away and I would always have the adjoining room to his room. But it was times where the assistant would be like, yo, your room is up the hall. I'd be like, yo, my room. And then I might see the same guy got the adjoining room. So I'd be like, oh, okay. I'd be like, yo, he'd be like, yo, I don't know what's going on, man, but that's his room. And then I put two and two together like that's the adjoining room so the person don't got to come outside no more. Right, like you used to do, right? You know, you had the adjoining room and Puff and Cassie might be in there and y'all, they would call you over, bro. You jealous, you mad. That's how you knew to follow dudes up to the room because they was taking your spot. Come on, bonds. You was getting your little bun buns blown out, bonds. And these were these were these went on quite often. What was going on back there? For me reading the lawsuit, that's when I put two and two together. Like, wow, this was the freak off. But it made a lot of sense. You know, it was uh one specific time we was in Las Vegas, and it was just me and Puff, and he had the Caesars suite. And I had the uh, room down the hall. And he called me. He said, yo, what's up? I said, oh, yo, hey, nice. Nice. what you doing? I said, nothing. I'm, not, I'm in the room. I'm chilling. What's up? What you need? He said, I said, you getting ready to go out? He said, nah, I'm going to go out. But why you staying there? Yo, you could come stay here. I got two floors. So I said, all right. Cool. It's just me and him. All right, I'll stay here. And uh, he tells me, he says, yo, I got this girl coming over. I can't remember her name, but I, I knew all the girls, you know. After, you know, they all knew me by my name, Bonds, hey. So he'd be like, yo, I got such and such coming over. So, you know, he was like, yo, can you do me a favor? I said, what? And, you know, when I, when I read the lawsuit, I said, wow. Because me and him, would all we would go to the sex stores together, you know, Hustler on Sunset, mm -hmm. different places. And he would go over on his side and get everything he'd get. And I would just kind of watch to make sure people that recognized him wasn't bothering him, you know. And this particular day, he said, yo, it's too much people out there, da, da, da. I need you to go to the store for me. I said, what you want? And when I read the, the lawsuit, he said, I want this really big black cock. 
That's it. <laughs> and I've been like, you got to remember, at this time, the lawsuit is not out. This is 2011. So he said, yo, shorty likes big black dicks, you know. And he said, yo, and if she if, if she get crazy, you know what I'm saying, I need that. And I said, all right. And I go and get it for him, you know, from there. It's in the bag. I give it to him. He like, yo, where you going to be? I said, I'm going to be upstairs. He said, all right. You know, it's one of his regular girls. So when I read the lawsuit, I kind of had to go back and think to myself, damn, was that big black chalk for her? Or was it for him? You know what I'm saying? And that's, 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 that's. Well, we all know it was for Diddy because Gene Dill told the same story. Or are they all piggybacking with the same story? We don't know. But. I'm going to go out with a limb and say, yo, some of the stuff Miles is saying is true, but some of them is just pile on, add up. He lying, and he mad, and he hurt, and he jealous. But, like I always say, man, click that like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, click all so you can get notifications every time I do one of these videos. And if you're a supporter of the channel, much love and respect goes out to you. Salute. And if you one of them haters, cut this shit.